The hemodynamic performance of most prosthetic heart valves is inferior to that of native valves. This is because prosthetic heart valves often cause some degree of obstruction to blood flow, which varies depending on the prosthesis and the size of the patient. The parameters used to evaluate prosthetic heart valve function include the peak velocity, pressure gradient, effective orifice area, and Doppler velocity index. In this med mastery lesson, I will focus on the first two, and you will learn how to use these parameters to determine if your patient's valve is obstructed. These measurements are based on the simplified Bernoulli equation, which describes the relationship between velocity and pressure. Typically, the instantaneous pressure gradient across the valve, indicated by P, is related to the instantaneous blood flow velocity through the prosthetic valve, indicated by V. The peak velocity is obtained using continuous wave Doppler across the prosthetic valve. To do this, the ultrasound beam should be positioned parallel to the blood flow with no significant angle. This is to ensure that the blood flow velocity is not over or underestimated. Different valve types have different ranges of velocities and gradients. Compared with a 27 mm bioprosthetic valve, a 21 mm mechanical valve in the aortic position will have higher velocities and gradients. So it is very important to have all the information related to the model, size and type of valve before performing the echocardiogram. The hemodynamic profiles and reference values for the different prosthetic valves can be found in the handbook. Let's go through some examples of how to calculate transprosthetic velocities and gradients. The apical four-chamber view is the best view to measure the peak velocity across the prosthetic mitral valve. Because the ultrasound beam is parallel or at very small angle to the blood flow. Next. Trace the Doppler profile to determine the peak velocity and mean pressure gradient. Here, the peak velocity is 2.3 meters per second and the mean pressure gradient is 7.62 millimeters of mercury. Generally, a peak velocity less or equal than 3 meters per second is considered normal. To check whether the pressure gradient is within the normal range, the next step is to determine the model and the size of the prosthesis and check the reference values for this specific valve. This is a 25 mm stented by a prosthesis, and the reference mean gradient for this specific valve is 3 mm of mercury. Therefore, a mean gradient of 7.62 suggests increased flow and a degree of obstruction. In this case, you should report these findings to the cardiologist that follows the patient, and the patient should be monitored more frequently. For a prosthetic valve in the aortic position, the apical five-chamber view is the most widely used as the ultrasound beam is parallel to the blood flow across the valve. So again, we trace the Doppler profile to assess the flow and pressure gradients across the valve. For this patient, the peak velocity is 4.13 meters per second, with a mean pressure gradient of 39.4 millimeters of mercury. The peak velocity is more than 3 meters per second, and based on the reference mean pressure gradients, these numbers suggest severely raised gradients across the valve. In this case, other valve parameters should be evaluated to confirm the significant stenosis, which will be covered in the next lesson. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.